to this edition of Taking Stock. Today I want to talk just for a little while about forgiveness. Father, forgive us, but not as we forgive other people. Could be the, the tagline we put or want to put under our own lives when we stand before God. Because if we're honest, we struggle with this notion, this idea of forgiving others. Of course, we know what the Bible says. We know that Jesus says that we're meant to forgive other people. We've heard countless times, Matthew chapter 5, verse 38 and following, that says, You've heard it said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist an evildoer. If someone strikes you on the right cheek, send them the other also. In the Lord's Prayer, which many of us, most of us say every day, Jesus teaches us that it's our responsibility to forgive. But more than that, the, the, the measure we use will be used against us. Father, forgive us as we forgive those who trespass against us. So why do we struggle so much within the life of the church with forgiveness? Now, of course, people do things wrong. People say things that really hurt us. And sometimes they don't say sorry. They don't repent, to use Christian language. And even when they do, we sometimes judge they don't really mean it. Does any of that mean we get to withhold forgiveness? It's a hard one because all of us get hurt. In my last appointment in the church, I, I suffered homophobia towards the end of that appointment. And the church, Circuit Connection, decided just to ignore it and, and the chief slanderer was promoted and I was forced out. And that was so painful. Can I get to hold on to that anger forever? Well, actually, yes, I can. But it wouldn't be sensible, it wouldn't be right, and it wouldn't be any good for me. Withholding forgiveness and refusing to move away from the past only hurts us. It imprisons us in a jail as real as any maximum security prison. So I want to challenge myself and you today. Where are you holding on to forgiveness instead of being Christ-like and sharing people with grace and love? In your family? In your community? In your church? In relationships with groups associated with us as church? I've heard these exact sentences said in the past few months, past years, I'm not forgiving until I see a sign of repentance. I'm not forgiving until they apologise for treating me badly. I'm not forgiving because I'm hurt and they don't deserve it. Those sentiments are unchristian. They don't make sense. Coldplay in a song called Death and All of His Friends say this sentence I don't want a battle from beginning to end I don't want a cycle of recycled revenge I don't want to follow death and all of his friends for me that sums up why holding on to forgiveness and seeking revenge are just pointless I don't want a battle from beginning to end. I don't want a cycle of recycled revenge. I don't want to follow death and all of his friends. I've had enough. It's time to let go. It's time to fall back into the grace of God. And I'm certain Jesus would agree with that line from that song. That's why we forgive. Because 
we are choosing daily to follow the path of life and resurrection and second, third, fourth, 97th, 195th chances. I don't want to follow death's path anymore. I want to follow Jesus. Father forgive is the only way. It's the Jesus way. And what's more, it's the only way that leads to the breaking of the chains that so easily entangle us and extinguish the flames of God's Spirit within us. I'm not going to forgive until I see is a sure way of walking in a path that will steal from us the joy and the peace of God's kingdom. I pray we all can learn to move on in our little and our big moments of anguish and pain and turn to the way of Jesus. Father, forgive. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen.